Hello and welcome to another of the short videos for the 12 Lead ECG I've Got The Rhythm Facebook group. In this episode we build upon the first series in which we covered an introduction to the ECG and explored how it works. We also looked at getting the basics right with good preparation and then moved on to using a systematic approach to reading the ECG. So today we are going to look at the heart axis. If you recall from episode 1, we covered Eindhoven's triangle and how the four limb leads create six views of the heart. It is these six views of the heart that we take the axis from. We know that electrical impulses travelling towards an electrode are seen as a positive deflection on the ECG. And we also know that the computer calculates the views for leads 1, 2 and 3 from the impulses it receives at the right arm, left arm and left leg electrode. So what does this mean? Well, lead 1 is calculated by measuring the voltage from the right arm to the left arm and this is 0 degrees on the heart's axis. Lead 2 is calculated by measuring the voltage from the right arm to the left leg and this is 60 degrees on the heart's axis. And then we have lead 3 which is calculated by measuring the voltage from the left arm to the left leg and this is 120 degrees on the heart's axis. If we add to the first three calculated leads the direction of electrical impulse towards the limb electrodes of AVR, AVL and AVF we can see that they have axes of minus 150, minus 30 and plus 90 degrees respectively. So you now know how the hexaxial reference diagram is created. And here is the hexaxial diagram showing the areas for normal axis, which is between minus 30 degrees and plus 90 degrees. If the axis is between minus 30 and minus 90 degrees, it is known as left axis deviation and if it is between plus 90 to a plus 180 degrees it is right axis deviation. There are several methods you can use to calculate the heart's axis and I may look at some or all of these in another video blog. Of course the easiest way to know the axis is to look at the computer's calculation on the ECG printout if you have that facility. I will finish this short video then by saying thank you for watching. Hopefully you find these short videos both helpful and easy to understand. Goodbye for now. Hope to see you all again soon.